Good morning and welcome to our worship today. It's lovely that I'm going to be joined by members of our mini church congregation and they're going to help with leading some aspects of our worship. But before we start, I'm going to light the candle, as I often do, to remind us of the light of Christ present with us as we worship. I'm going to say some opening words and uh, these words are going to be accompanied by some actions and I encourage you to join in with me in the actions. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Amen. Hi everybody. Last time you saw Hannah talking about a thankful jar. Spike and I are having a look today at what people are thankful for. Shall we have a look, Spike? Alright, well the first one we've got, Spike, is from Sophie. And Sophie's really thankful that she is allowed to go to school and has a good education. Do you like that one? Oh, yes, he says. The next one we've got, oh, let's have a look, is from William. And William's is about school as well. William started school and he says he's very thankful for Mrs. Stevenson, who helped him learn his phonics and his numbers. Let's have another look. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, this is from Megan. She's thankful for birds. You like the birds too, don't you? That's right. Oh, this is from Karen. Who's your friend, isn't it? Karen says she's thankful for a toilet to clean. Yes, I know that's a bit strange. It means that she's got running water. She's also thankful for her aches and pains. I know that seems a bit strange as well. It means she's still alive. And she's thankful for dishes to wash. Are you thankful for dishes to wash? Mm. But it means that she's got food to eat. Ah, that means that makes sense. And what am I thankful for? Well, I'm thankful for being able to smell the lovely flowers. And I'll be able to cuddle my friends like you close. And I'll be able to taste the food that God has provided me. And that I can see the beautiful leaves, especially in autumn time. And also for hearing the birds singing from the trees. What about you, Spike? What are you thankful for? Oh, you're thankful for being able to come and say hello to people in church. <laughs> This is a morning like no other Never again will it be here So let's get moving, let's get going yeah, yeah. Don't let the daylight disappear Cause it's a good, 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 good morning. It's a good, 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 good morning. A good, 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 good morning. It's gonna be a very good day. Cause you're a good, 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 good God. A good, 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 good God. A good, 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 good God. You are a very good God. Let us remember why we are here today. Why? We're here to sing. To praise who? Our God in heaven So let me hear you say Yeah! He is our King And the Maker of today It's a good, 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 good morning It's a good, 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 good morning A good, 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 good morning 
gonna be a very good day Cause you're a good, 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 good guy A good, 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 good guy A good, 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 good guy You are a very good guy Yawning. I wonder if you've ever had to do things again and again and again. Maybe you've learned in the past or you're even learning now how to play a musical instrument. In which case you might be learning how to practice and you might be learning that to make practice really worth it, you have to sometimes practice something again and again and again until you get it right. Or maybe you play a sport and maybe you've been used to having a coach or a trainer make you do drills again and again and again until you've learnt to do a new skill in that particular sport. Well, we're going to be hearing about something that Jesus teaches us that we need to do again and again and again. I wonder whether you can guess what that might be. Watch and listen to this drama from Matthew chapter 18 and verses 21 to 35 and see if you can work it out. Peter asked Jesus how often we should forgive someone. Seven times? That seemed a lot of times to Peter. But Jesus was not impressed. No, answered Jesus, not seven times, but 70 times, seven times. Peter did some quick maths. That was loads of times. Peter just couldn't imagine it. So Jesus told Peter a story about two slaves, a princess and a queen. The first slave owed his queen lots of money. Not a little money, not lots of money, but loads and loads of money, millions and millions, more than he would ever earn in his life. The queen said to the servant, It's time to pay up. Don't pay now. You'll have to sell everything, your house, your possessions, even your wife and kids. Oh, please give me more time to pay, please. OK, you're free to go. Straight away, the man went out and met another slave. The second slave owed him some money, not loads of money. Not even a lot of money, just a couple of coins. Did the first slave remember how kind the queen had been to him? No, he grabbed his fellow slave and demanded to be paid. Give me back my money. Oh, I'll give it back to you soon. Just have patience. Instead of saying, hey, that's okay, the first slave grabbed the fellow slave and threw him into jail. Of course, all this was reported back to the Queen, who was extremely angry. The Queen shouted at the first slave, Why couldn't you do the same? I forgave you. The queen then handed the slave over to be tortured in jail till he had paid everything he owed. Jesus looked at Peter and his other disciples and said, God is like that forgiving queen. When we say to him, I am sorry, he says, that's okay. I forgive you. We can start again. And he does that again and again and again. And that's what he wants us to do for each other too. Again and again and again. Well, did you notice what Jesus said we need to learn to do again and again and again? It's one of the hardest things in the world to do, but it's probably one of the most important. And that, of course, is to forgive. 
I wonder if you have ever forgiven somebody for really hurting you? Or have you been forgiven by somebody else and I wonder how that felt? When do you find it hard to forgive somebody? We're going to hear from Madeline about a time that she's had to forgive someone and how it felt after she'd done it. Thank you, Madeline. Has there ever been a time when you needed to forgive somebody? Yes, when when I was building a tower with my friends and then some boys knocked it over and, and then I uh, told the teacher for them for them and then the teacher asked them to say sorry. And did they say sorry? Yes. And did you forgive them? Yeah. And how did that make you feel? Happy. I wonder if you, like Madeline, have got stories of when you've had to forgive somebody. I wonder how easy or hard you found that. And I wonder if you've ever thought, if somebody's done something to hurt you, well, I'll forgive you this once, but I won't ever forgive you, forgive you again. I wonder what you made of Jesus' story, of today's story, where Jesus actually encourages us to go on forgiving again and again. In the story that we uh, had acted out for us today, the first slave was forgiven zillions of pounds. He would have been forgiven what in today's times would have equaled about 200,000 years worth of work. Can you even imagine that? None of us can imagine that. Of course, we don't even live that long, do we? So much the king or the queen, as it was in today's story, forgave. But then the slave wouldn't forgive his fellow slave for even a tiny amount. In today's time, it would have been about a hundred days of work, nothing compared with what he, he had been forgiven. Which of those two characters you'd be most like? Would you be like the king, forgiving and forgiving, or like the slave, not wanting to forgive at all? At the end of the story, Jesus was implying that actually we can be rather like the first slave. He was saying that we've all done lots and lots of things that need to be forgiven, and God. What does he do? He goes on and he forgives us and he forgives us and he forgives us time and time again. But just as God forgives us time and time again, he also says we need to be like him and to forgive others time and time again. Not just once or twice or seven times, but all the time. When he said he, he said to, um, 70 times, seven times to Peter. He didn't literally mean that number of times, which of course is 490. What he meant was we should just keep on forgiving. Sometimes we might try to forgive someone, but we don't quite, to man we don't quite manage to really let it go. And we have to forgive that same person for the same thing again and again. We have to keep going back to it. And it can be really hard. But what we can trust is that God will, even, will always help us. Even though it can take us a long time in that journey to get to the place where we feel we really truly have forgiven. But do you know, when we don't forgive, it can just cause us more pain. What can happen is our resentments can eat away at us inside, and that can make us feel bitter or sad. You see, there's something amazing about forgiving. It doesn't just help the person that we're forgiving. It actually helps us too. There's something very important, though, to know. Forgiving doesn't mean that what somebody has done to us doesn't matter. Sometimes we even need to walk away from somebody if they're going to keep hurting us. But walking away doesn't mean that we don't forgive. 
both for their sake and for ours. It's a bit like letting go. It's a bit like taking the hook out that holds them and holds us to the pain. There's a man called Lewis Smeads and he says this, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. And that's so true. That's actually what Madeline was describing. Did you notice she said when she'd forgiven, she felt happy. It's the hardest thing to do, but it's the most important thing to do. And it brings healing not only to the person we forgive, but to us. So if someone were to ask you, how many times should I forgive? What would your answer be? I'm going to do a little activity now, which is going to help us, I hope, to receive God's forgiveness, but also to give forgiveness to, uh, to other people. Now, unless you've got a paper shredder at home, you won't be able to take part in the activity actually doing it yourself. But I hope by watching me, you can imagine also doing it and allow God to work with you in that. So first of all, like me, I'd like you to imagine that you have a piece of paper and on your piece of paper, you write down some things that you know you need God's forgiveness for in your life. Things that you might have said that are unkind, things that you might have done. What is it that you would want to ask God for forgiveness for? Now I'm going to take my piece of paper and I'm going to put it in the shredder behind me. And you'll see how the paper disappears as it gets shredded into thousands and thousands of tiny pieces. Beware, it makes quite a loud noise. Now you probably can't see the tiny pieces, but those pieces are so tiny, there's nothing really to be seen anymore. Because God, when we come to him and we say sorry, he forgives us totally. He shreds, if you like, everything into tiny pieces that it can, can't be seen any longer as he forgives us. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think of anybody in my life that I need to forgive. And I'm going to draw those people or that person on another piece of paper. I wonder who you would draw or what names you might write if you were to think about who you needed to forgive in your own life. Just think about that for a moment. And now once again, I'm going to be thinking of that person as I place a piece of paper in my shredder. My doing that is my commitment to forgive that person. And I might need to go come back and do that again sometime. I might need to come back and to forgive them once more if I haven't completely let it go, but it's the beginning of my saying, I forgive you. And I encourage you to do the same. I'm just going to say a prayer. Loving God, as we say sorry to you, we pray and thank you for your forgiveness. As you forgive us, help us to forgive others who have hurt us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now Rebecca is going to come and share a craft activity that you might like to do at home all thinking all about the theme of forgiveness. Today for our craft we will need a, a soap and some felt tip pens. So think about the things that either you need to forgive or that you need to ask to be forgiven for. Write them on your soap and decorate it with your felt tip pens and then the next time you need to go and wash your hands use this soap and think about the things you've written on it and after a couple of goes, all of those things will disappear and hopefully you will feel like you have been forgiven or you have forgiven somebody. 
Let us pray. When you hear the words, let us pray to the Lord. Please respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. We have listened to God's word. Now let us come into God full of hope for all our needs. For hope and healing for our world in the midst of this pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders and those who care for us, as they have to make such difficult decisions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For peace in homes, our schools and our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For peace and harmony in countries torn apart by war around the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For comfort and healing for all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves that we may model to others God's forgiveness and love and be aware of God's presence in our daily lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving, healing and forgiving God, we bring these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to bring our prayers to a close as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we're going to finish with our final song, My Lighthouse, that reminder that Jesus lights the way for us. Don't forget to try doing your craft at home, using that as a reminder and a way to remember to forgive others just as God forgives you. Let's sing together. <laughs>